Hello, hello. Nancy Sawyer here for Let's Coach 2023. Happy Thursday. I'm glad to be with you here today. I'm going to let some people join in while I take some deep breaths and get settled. You know how you have some days that are a little more hectic than others? Today's been a hectic day for me already. So I'm going to take a couple of breaths. Whew. I was a couple minutes late today. I do apologize for that. I had a call that went on uh, longer than I intended, longer than it was supposed to. So I am here and glad to be present with you. I hope everything is going well in your world. I want to uh, just go over some housekeeping in case you haven't been here with me before. If you have a question or comment, you can put it right in the Q&A down below. If you would like to hop up and be coached one-on-one -on -one with me, by me, you can raise your hand with the raise hand icon. I can bring you up and we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. You do not have to go on camera if you do not want for that, but you can. So again, anything you're bringing to, to today's table with us, you can put in the Q&A. I am uh, a coach that specializes in helping people to master midlife. There's so many things that come up during this time of your life, whether it's relationships, children, um, career changes, career transitions, divorce, losing parents, becoming empty nesters. There's so many different things that, and lots of common themes that weave in and out of all of those experiences. So I am here to help you navigate through that and break it all down. There's something that I was thinking about yesterday. I went for a run yesterday and was listening to an audio book. And I was thinking about how we have, we go into experiences and interactions with others as predictors. We predict what is going to happen. And when we do this, this is normal for us to do. It's because our caveman brain, right? It wants to remember what's happened before because when we remember, you know, if I go down this path, it leads to the water. If I go down this path, it leads to the, the tigers. Um, our brain is programmed to remember things so that we can keep us, um, it can keep us alive, right? Our brain is a survival mechanism. And unfortunately, in this day and age, a lot of those things we don't necessarily need, but they still show up in different ways. So one of those ways it shows up is when we go into an interaction with someone, when we come home from work and our spouse is there, when our kids come home from school and they walk in the door, we have an expectation. We predict what is going to happen. We do this based on what has happened in the past. And sometimes this gets us stuck in very unhealthy patterns, in patterns that don't lead to great things, okay? So what I'm encouraging you to do is to shift from a predictor to a creator and to uh, someone who acknowledges all the possibilities, all of the possibilities. So when you're coming home from work and you walk in the door, are you going in with a mode of predicting, uh, this is going to be awful. I have to go make dinner. The house is going to be a mess. Whatever is coming up for you. What are the thoughts that are coming up for you? And what different thoughts, how can you reframe that and go into it and think of it as what can I create when I walk through that door? I can create a feeling of joy. I can create a feeling of gratitude. I can create a great interaction when I say hello in a loving and kind way to my children, to my spouse, et cetera, yeah? And also, what, what possibilities could you embrace when you're walking through that door? Geez, well, this is gonna be an amazing night. Maybe there's gonna be something awesome on the other side of that door. And the same thing goes for when we're picking up the phone to make a phone call, when we're going into a meeting with our coworkers, when we're going out uh, for a night with our friends. In any interaction that you're going into, you're entering into, are you bringing negative predictions with you? 
And if you are, how can we become aware of that? How can we call them out and not make it like Groundhog Day? You've seen the movie Groundhog Day or heard of it? But every day is the same. We create that sometimes by our expectations and what we predict. And then sometimes we even behave in a certain way in response to the stimulus. Yeah? Am I making sense here? Sometimes we just, someone says something. The boss comes in and um, says, I need to talk to you. And immediately your brain goes to, oh, this isn't going to be good. Or, gee, I wonder what happened this time. You know, what are the thoughts that are coming up that are predicting what is going to happen? And can we acknowledge them? As with everything I teach and talk about, the root of all of it to get started is to become an observer of yourself. Notice what comes up for you especially in response to those external factors, to what's happening on, happening in your environment around you, what comes up within you. And then based on those thoughts that come up within you, what are the actions you take? What are the words you say? What is the movement you do? What's the behavior you exhibit? See, when we can study ourselves in this way, we learn so much and we start to understand that we have a lot more power than we realize. Once we can control our responses, our predictions, and go in to an interaction with wonder and curiosity, hey, I wonder what's going to happen today when I go into that staff meeting. Instead of these staff meetings are always boring they're awful, I'm going to get yelled at, whatever it is, right? It's, hey, I, I wonder what's what the staff meeting will bring today. Go into it with curiosity. Maybe go into it saying, what can I notice that I've never noticed before? Someone uh, wrote in here, I love this reminder to check what my preconceived notion may be before entering into a situation. You're right. It does affect the overall situation if I feel a certain way going in. Absolutely. Right. We bring that to the table. We have those biases. We have that feeling of, <clears throat> well, every other time I've gone into the staff meeting, it's always been boring. So why would this time be any different? And if you have that attitude, it's pretty likely you're going to create the exact same experience again. Right. So how can we shift our mindset to be one of curiosity and possibilities instead of the same old thing? I hope this is resonating with you. I have a pattern, some patterns in my own life that are challenging. And um, one of them is in the morning, getting my son off to school. It seems to be, I try to go in it with a with fresh eyes and a fresh attitude, and I seem to get beaten down every day um, by the circumstances of what happens. <clears throat> I think one of the positive things is I still get up with a positive attitude. Um, it doesn't always work out my way, and some day, but some days it does go okay. So what preconceived notions are you bringing? If you're driving to work and maybe your commute is uh, into the city and there's traffic, do you walk out the door with your coffee and your to-go cup and your keys and your bag and go, this is going to be another awful drive to work? Or is it, let's see how it goes today. Where is your bias at? Where is your level at? What can you shift in your thinking? This um, comes up a lot in relationship dynamics. I was um, just speaking to a client recently about relationship dynamics uh, between the husband and wife and how 
things are very cyclical, cyclical, um, not circular, cyclical. And so they'll go through periods of time where things are okay. And then they'll start to degrade a little bit, but no one says anything. And then until it ends up <clears throat> being kind of a monster blowout, then they have a nice talk. They get back on the same page. The cycle starts again without any significant change in the communication patterns or in the behavior styles. And a lot of people do this in relationships. They will have the same cycle that happens over and over again. And when we get in those cycles, we subconsciously understand the cycle and participate in it because we know how it works. So if you're seeking change, if you're unhappy with something, start to think about what you are bringing to the dynamic of that relationship, whether it is a spousal relationship, a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, a parent-child relationship, a coworker relationship. What are you bringing to the table? What predictions are you bringing? And how are you living out those predictions? How are you embodying those and showing up in a way that creates the same cycle, that creates the same results? Is this resonating with you? Are there ways in your life, things that you're feeling stuck with, relationships that you're unhappy with. And can you examine how you might be a participant in those dynamics or in the stuckness? What power do you have to change it? What power do you have? I also want to speak for a minute about <clears throat> negativity bias. Something I noticed in myself over the weekend. I had a very big weekend. My daughter um, graduated high school and she's a dancer and she had her final dance performances. She did five, was in five incredible performances between Friday night and Sunday night. It was an incredible weekend. Lots of friends, lots of family, lots of beautiful performances, lots of emotion. Um, also during the weekend, we lost someone in our family, a grandparent. My children's uh, grandmother, my mother-in-law passed away in the middle of the weekend. And I noticed myself on Monday when someone said, how was your weekend? I immediately went to, well, the dance and all that stuff, except so-and-so died. And I caught myself and I thought to myself, I just sat through five incredibly touching, beautiful, wonderful performances. My daughter graduated from high school. I saw so many friends and family and people I loved this weekend. It was full of joy and wonderful things. And the one thing that came up was the one negative thing that we lost someone in our family. Of course, that's sad. Of course, that's a tragic event. But the negativity bias of calling out the negative thing rather than all the positive things that happened that weekend why do we have that? How does that show up for us? Has this ever happened for you? You may have a day where 10 great things happen and one negative thing happened. And someone says, how was your day? And you say, oh, it was awful. I got in a car accident on the way to work. Or I had a fender bender. Or geez, I, the, they got my coffee wrong. Or I spilled my coffee all over my white pants. I don't know. Right? But you might have had 10 amazing things also happen on that same day. Yet we always, not we always, 
Sometimes we just focus on the negative thing. Do you ever notice that in yourself? Have you become aware of that? <clears throat> what I say a lot is, you know, what you give attention to grows. So what we try to focus on the positive, right? We try to focus on the positive, knowing that life is not supposed to be all happy and easy and fun. Like there's no guarantee of what life is. Life just is. And then we attach meaning to the things that happen in our life. We attach meaning to circumstances, to environmental situations, to things that are going on around us. We attach meaning to it. This was a bad day. This was a good day. Um, and sometimes in doing that, we're creating our own suffering. So are there ways in your life that you're doing that? Are you focusing on the negative sometimes when there are all these positive things to focus on? Maybe you have friends like that, coworkers like that. People in your world who just like to complain about the things that go wrong or the things that aren't working out for them. And when they're, we're around those people a lot, how does it make us feel? I find it to be very draining to be around people like that. If they are close friends or family members and they're going through something, of course we wanna be there for them. We wanna allow them to vent. We wanna allow them to share, right? And sometimes life does get very difficult. And a lot of lemons are thrown, if you will. And not everyone has the same uh, lemonade toolbox. So how do we how do we allow others to vent and to manage through the things in life? And how do we allow ourselves to vent and manage through the things in life? And there's a comment here I just want to read. It says, I noticed that I do this. I'll give a little rant. Or I just say, okay, I don't share what's going well in my days. I don't even think I even know what good is happening in my days. Well, this, and this goes all the way back to um, gratitude, right? A gratitude practice. And I used a gratitude practice to bring me out of a deep depression um, several years ago when I started a gratitude journal. And I um, started it and I required myself to write down 10 things I'm grateful for every day. And there were some days it was really hard to find 10 things and it didn't have to be big things. It could be small things, even, you know, my cup, cup of coffee, cup of coffee, or the sound of the birds outside, fresh air to breathe, whatever it is. Right. But when we start with a gratitude practice or when we begin a gratitude practice, what that does is that has us acknowledge the good things. And when we make that a regular practice in our life, the negative things kind of seem to lessen. They go away, they go by the wayside a little bit. When we are focused constantly on what we are grateful for and for the good things in our life, it absolutely does tip that scale back into focusing on the positive instead of focusing on the negative. That is one of the best tools we have if you're someone that is focusing on the negative or <clears throat> finds yourself complaining a lot. It's important to listen to your thoughts and listen to your words. How are you showing up? What are you saying? And someone says, I feel very uncomfortable to tell others good things in my life. It feels like I'm boasting or bragging. <clears throat> Absolutely. If you are 
constantly going up to people and saying, wow, look at this. Look at how great this is. Look at how great this is. There are some people that might not like that. I don't think it's boasting, um, in my personal view, boasting or bragging is when you're being overly obnoxious about it, if you will, right? It's okay to be humble and still acknowledge when good things happen, right? And it's okay to just say, um, gee, I'm so grateful today's a beautiful day outside. I'm so grateful I got to work today. I'm so grateful for the opportunities that are coming our way. These are great opportunities. So acknowledging the good does not have to be um, over the top. It does not have to be ego-driven either. And I think when we say the words to me, when I hear boasting and bragging, that to me sounds ego-driven, <clears throat> as in someone saying, I am better than you. Oh, I won first place, you did not. But just acknowledging when things are going well for you. I'm so excited that call went well today. I'm, I'm really excited I got the opportunity for that promotion. The boasting and the bragging to me, that comes out when we are using our good fortune or accomplishment to put someone else down, to say, I'm better than you. And as I often speak about, it's about doing everything with love and kindness, right? Thinking of the greater good, lifting people up, focusing on the positive, We can focus on the positive without creating a negative. And I think, again, that's where the boasting and bragging comes in. Um, and that's when it's someone saying, I am better than you. I'm great. You're not. Um, or with an intention where, where the, in, in the unspoken words say that. It's a lot about how you phrase things as well. Right? I'm so grateful to get this promotion versus, ah, of course, I got that over Julie. I'm way better than her, right? <clears throat> the delivery is very important. And it is absolutely okay to acknowledge the good and to celebrate the good, to celebrate what's going well, to celebrate accomplishments, to celebrate achievements. Whether that achievement is getting a new job sticking to your healthy eating routine, not picking up the phone to call your ex, finally writing one page of your book, whatever it is, what is that achievement for you to celebrate? How have you been successful? How are you creating a great life for yourself? So again, just as we sort of wind down and wrap up, just today's message is, again, about understanding what are our preconceived notions? How are we predicting? How are we becoming predictors? And is that prediction that we have, is that, does that keep us stuck? Does that keep us in a pattern, in an unhealthy pattern with a relationship or a situation we're in? Does it keep us um, from showing up as our best self when we've already decided the outcome of what this phone call is going to be? Oh, I'm going to call and they're going to get mad and they're going to say no. And have we already determined our future? Or are we approaching something with curiosity, looking at the possibilities? What's the best possible outcome? from this. This could actually be great fun. How can I make it fun? How can I make this successful? How can I make this a win-win? What a great, this says, what a great question. How am I creating a great life for myself? Yeah, we have power. 
we have power to keep ourselves stuck. We have power to move ourselves forward. We're not the only players in the game, of course, because there are others around us who are ready to receive our curiosity and our greatness and those who are not. But we still have so much power. So yes, rem please remember that question. How am I creating a great life for myself? Or what am I creating for myself? That allows us to acknowledge what we do have control over. As we know, with life, there are plenty of things we do not have control over. So when we focus on the things we do have control over, what's the best outcome I can get from this? What's the best thing that could happen when I go into work today? What's, what, can, what would make it a great day? And we shift our thinking to possibilities to great possibilities. Then we go into creator mode. We can create great things for ourselves. So yes, please take away that question from today. And it is difficult to be around those sometimes who are, who are in a victim mode or who are complaining and negative. And you know, what's your strategy? If you're, if you're going into work and maybe some of your coworkers are often negative or complaining and you find it draining, right? What's your strategy when you're going into work tomorrow? How can you create a better day for yourself? What's your strategy? Is it when they, when it's lunchtime and they all gather around the lunchroom and start their daily ranting? Maybe you're going to go for a walk for 15 minutes outside and not participate in that and lift yourself up. What is your solution for that? So again, we have so much more control. We don't have to be stuck in the same things. And we can use that predictor to create something different for ourselves. If we're predicting that at lunch today, everyone's going to be in the lunchroom complaining, we can use that information and say, hmm, then you know what? I'm not going to be there because I don't want to be around that. So this today at lunch, I'm going to go outside and take a 20 minute walk instead of going and hanging in the lunchroom like I always do. So we do have choice. So we can use that question, how am I creating a great life for myself to choose different paths? All right, one, one last comment and then I'll sign off. This has been such a powerful session for me. I want to get out of predicted mode. <laughs> how can I create a better day for myself? Yes. I think I need to smile more. Yes. And we have control over whether or not we smile, right? All we have to do is smile. You can do that. And I hope that you'll do it many times today and tomorrow and the day after that. All right, gang. It's been wonderful being with you today. Please come back and see me next Thursday at 1 p.m. I will be here. And uh, this has been Nancy Sawyer for Let's Coach 2023. Please hop on every day. There's a different coach giving a great talk. Uh, lots of different people, lots of great information, lots of good energy. Thanks for coming and we'll see you next week.